Okay, Payne with Getty Down Radio, Amps TV, and I am here with the uh, Orville American, Simpson, American Gangster, Orville Simpson. Hello, How are man. you? How are you, man? Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Mm -hmm. So, you want to tell the viewers about yourself? Um, in, in, a sh in a short. Where are you from? From Detroit, Michigan. Okay, and. I know it's a little bit about how I met you is the streets don't want me back. You were part of this organization and this movement, correct? Yes, ma'am. And also mentioned in this book. Yeah. So tell me a little bit okay. about you. Let me see the book. All right. During the time where I wrote this book, I was still incarcerated. Um, he had gotten in contact with me and asked me if it was all right if he can put me in the book. I, I told him that I didn't have a problem with it. And um, just like I'm going to tell you now, there's no holes barred. You can ask me as many questions as you like. And um, okay. we, can, we can get started. Well, how much time did you supposed to do uh -huh. in prison? Because you were mentioned in here that you were in prison. I, um, I uh, originally had a life sentence. For? Selling over 650 grams of cocaine, I got caught with two kilos of cocaine in um, 1992. Okay, and they sentenced yeah. you to a life sentence. Yeah. Which was it was a 625 life or what oh, anything about? over 650 grams is considered a life sentence. Okay. That was during the time of. Uh, um, I forgot who was president. President Bush. Bush. And it was the anti-drug. Right, the, the, the war on crime. War on crime. Um, rather, the war on drugs. And, and um, I got caught up in that war. Okay. Yeah. And how did you get out from 18 sentence? Was you appealed um, or? Uh, actually, I, I received a commentation from Rick Snyder, Governor Rick Snyder. Wow. Uh, awesome. He... Um, I do believe it was 1998, the laws changed, and we became eligible after serving 17 and a half years for parole. And um, I ended up doing 18 and a half. You know, I didn't have like a squeaky clean record, but I had a pretty decent record, good enough for me to get out of prison. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, tell me this. Mm -hmm. Let's go back a little bit. So you did 18 years for being caught with two keys of cocaine. Do you think all that was worth it? All that good money that was flying through your hands? Well, actually, I thought it was um, a little bit excessive. It was my first first offense. Never been in okay. trouble before. and um, Never been in trouble before? First mm, offense? That was my first offense. Wow. First offense ever, yeah, and um, I thought that was kind of outrageous to give a guy Absolutely. a life sentence for two kilos of cocaine in the closet. Police raided the house, they found two kilos of cocaine, uh, a few pistols, and some money. You know, but I, I thought it was um, a bit excessive to say life. And when my, my lawyer said, well, you know, he's never been in trouble before, they said, we don't care life. Yeah. Why do you feel like well this did it affect any others at this time? It did affected it, yeah. my entire family. I was the first out of all my mom's children to ever go to prison. And um as a matter of fact I do believe you were there when we spoke on I lost my mom during my my stint in prison. She used to be like the only person visiting me. And I seen her like maybe two weeks. She was so sickly, I knew that was the reason why she came. My sister brought her. And I hadn't seen her for a while before then. You know, and I just was like, wow. Mom, I mean, you all right? She said, no, I'm not all right, but I'm, I made it here to see you. And I kind of like made it a vow to myself 
that if I ever got out, to try to make her smile wherever she be at. I just want her to smile and say, okay, now he's doing the right things. You know? I don't I don't want her to be thinking that I'm still out here in, into nonsense. You know, and I'm that's pretty much what I believe it was. It was nonsense. What would you tell someone or your children or grandchildren to prevent something like this to ever happen to them? It's it's kind of hard to talk to people when you first, you know, I didn't I really didn't get to see my children much. Maybe we can touch a little bit on that as well because when I left, their mothers went to different like I got children by three different women. And one was a high school kid. My daughters were by my my, my, my second and my last son is by my wife. My ex wife. And um but when I came home, nobody wanted, really wanted to even listen because they're all grown. They had kids of their own by the time I came home. And it was hard to talk to them about it, but during my stay in there, I always wrote them and told them, hey, whatever you do, don't get into drugs. You know, don't, don't do this, don't do that. But it seems as if my oldest son, I lost him to the streets as well. He, he's, a, he's now in Georgia doing a life sentence. Yeah, so May I say why? Is it he has a murder case. Okay. Yeah, I don't really know the circumstances of it, but he did tell me that um, it was supposed to have been an accident. So I would say about that. Okay. You know, he's still in the course. He's still trying right. to get home, and we're going right. to hopefully he'll be home soon. Okay. Okay, so. So tell us a little bit about as you younger, getting older, and the time has changed from now, from then to now. What has changed to you? It's funny you ask me that because we sit, and my wife and I, we talk a lot, uh, my present wife. We talk a lot, and, and we talk about how it seems as if, as if the roles have changed. Like men act more like women. You know, women are like the primary people that run the houses now. There used to be a man's position. But now, with a lot of this stuff that's going on, I, I really don't know if you want me to touch on this, but I think it's all by design. No, touch on it. I, I just, I, just, I think <laughs> it's all by design. I mean, I, I think that um, they really would like, I don't really want to say the black and white thing. I think that they would like the male in where I'm from, in Detroit. I really think that they would like the males to be nothing, you know. And I mean, I think the odds are stacked against us when we get home. Everything is all about we can't get jobs, and uh, well, we can get jobs, but not jobs to sustain our families. We, it seems as if we still have to try to jump back into the street life in order to be able to pay our bills at home with the jobs that they try to give you when you come home. I don't think that nobody in today's time can make money off of 10 to $12 an hour. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. and, and, not, and, not, and take care of a family. Maybe you can take care of yourself, but you're not going to take care of your family. You know, I just wanted to touch on that briefly. So you can... No, I think that's pretty interesting because I hear more and more every day that um, felons actually have issues with trying to get jobs and what do you think that the communities or the states I think can that, do? I think that we can get jobs. I'm not going to say we can't get a job. It's more, it should I just be think more better opportunities. We can't get good jobs. Mm -hmm. It's some that slip through the cracks. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm not saying all of us but a lot of us are out here suffering. We go from job to job trying to sustain, or we gotta get two or three jobs and we, we get home, we can't do nothing but fall asleep. Mm -hmm. You know, I see a lot of the guys that I was incarcerated with, a lot of us are driving trucks these days. Mm -hmm. That's pretty lucrative. Yeah. You know, I think that's, that's a good, good job for some of us to have, me, myself. I feel like accounting is good for me. That's why I went back to school. Okay. You know, I supposed to graduate in October. Congratulations. So, I think that's jobs like that, but will I be able to be an accountant with this felony on my record? I gotcha. 
you know, so let's, you know, so. Saying it's pros and cons, I got to, you. Everything we try to do is always going, even though this happened 20-something years ago, I'm still feeling the crunch from it. I still every every time I get a good in a good position, they come and say if I got the job, they come and say, "Hey, we just got your background check, and um, let's let us talk to you in the office." And then I come out with the paint slip. Okay. So. So, do you feel like these jobs are intimidated, or why is it that they I think won't it's a give? trust thing. Okay. I think that um, maybe the guys before me. They came home, messed it up for us. I, I don't, I can't really answer that. But I think the odds are stacked against us. At least give us a chance to work some of these good paying jobs. Right. Let us help with our families and so forth. Excuse me. And, and I think that that way you you don't have to resort back to the street. You know, it's it's easy to. It's like when we talking to the children. I always tell Rob, I always say it's a lot easier to build up a, a, a strong child than a broken man mm -hmm. because no one knows what happens to us while we're inside those, mm -hmm. those walls. All the, and a lot of us come out with, on, on, um, on medication, mm -hmm. messed up from the ordeal. Speaking of that, I'm doing a report in school, and <laughs> and my report is about the treatment in the prison system, okay? Mm -hmm. So, a big question I have to ask, do you feel like the guards or the prison staff treats the, the prison men, are they, do they feel like, do they treat them like human beings? Do they? Do you feel like they treat them well? Do you feel like they use their authority way over past? Because I hear more and more reports of uh, neglect, abuse from certain prisons. Well, the only thing I can really talk about is the prisons in Michigan because those were like I went to like 18, 19 different facilities during my stay there, and in some of those places, yes, they were very very, very rude, and they made you want to do something to them, but you always had in the back of your mind, if I do, mm -hmm. I'm never, ever coming home. Mm -hmm. I've seen young men in there that um, cracked and, and, and then done something to the officer, and they end up with a life sentence. Or they did something to each other that you was in there for only a few months, and you end up getting a life sentence because you had to kill a guy in, in prison. You know, I, I mean... That part we can go on forever. I know so much in, in there, but I mean, I don't like the way TV betray it because there's nothing like TV. Do you feel like people get um, health care like they should in there? No. Okay. No. Do you think they get the nutrition that they should? No. Okay. No. As a matter of fact, I was a cook in there for 10 years. Okay. And um, a lot of the food we got were... Um, I seen labels on it that say not to be sold for retail sale, mm -hmm. and and um, food that was way outdated that they kept froze for a long time, and mm -hmm. I was still told serve it. So, yeah, that's if if you're hearing those stories, they're true. Okay, that's what very I true. Know. And um, when it comes to the vegetables and things like that, some of it we have to pick through it. We have to pick through it in order to, um, that's my son calling, I apologize, that's my son, he's going, he, I'll probably call again because I broke me in the middle of this. Let's continue, please, let me, go ahead. So you do feel like that, that you are being neglected and mistreated? Wow. Oh, of course, yeah. I, I mean, I've seen guys um, that have pneumonia and um, they were told, Oh, you'll be all right. They give them a couple of aspirins and say, go back to your cell. And the next morning, he ends up deceased. Wow. You know, um, I, can, I can say his name. Terry Porter was one of them. You know, he was healthy, worked out with me all the time. Next thing you know, he said, man, I'm not feeling good. I'm not feeling good. 
I said, man, they didn't want to give him a pass to go to the clinic. So you have to get a pass to go. Right. So he just went up. He got up and went. They told him, you'll be all right. Just go on back to your cell. And the next morning, he was dead. Wow. You know, so that was that's just one. It's a whole lot of other ones that, that got stabbed. And the news said they was laying on their bed and sleeping. Right. You know, it's all type of, but it was, uh, it was just crazy in there. I mean, we can... We could talk about prison. Well, let's not encap too much. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you a, a little bit more about the streets don't love you back. Yes, the thank things you. that you and Rob are planning on doing with these young people, and tell me a little bit about what the plans are. Well, this I, what I say is I don't want to just keep talking to them. I want to start having activities for them. Like we can have a baseball game for the kids. We can have a basketball game for the kids. Like open up, go rent out a gym. Or um, I do believe they have already have a boxing ring. We can get some of the boys and just take them to the boxing ring and teach them how to box. Instead of always just trying to beat them in the head with knowledge, it's good to give them that, but you also have to have play time with them too. Right. Because right. we don't want to just always say, hey, don't sell drugs and not give them a reason why not. Right. You know, or not give them a substitute for don't sell drugs, but do this. Right. You know, because my biggest addiction was the money when I was young. I didn't get high. I was in love with the money and the life. Did it hurt you though? The money. Yes. I, I, the, yeah. I, I, you know, I got shot. You know, I got shot a lot of times. I'm. How many times have you been shot? I've been shot almost, I've been shot three on three different occasions I, I've been shot. Um, two of those were occasions were at clubs, though. Okay. And um, the last one, I got robbed. Okay. But in the beginning, I was always in the streets. I was always going to clubs. I was at um, downtown Soul Night, Detroit. I got shot a few times then, you know, um, Got into it with some guys in there. Went outside in the parking lot. They ran up to me and shot me. Um, second time, I was on the east side. And that Dazzles. I don't, I don't think that you would even be familiar with Dazzles. But uh, it was a club on Detroit east side. I walked out the door and they got shot like almost nine times. And uh, this last time, I just got... I was with a friend. I, I went to go visit a friend. We were supposed to be watching the Lions game. And the night that it was, uh, what well, that, that that early Sunday, uh, I think it was December eighth, two thousand thirteen. It was that game that was real snowy, and um, I was sitting there watching the game. And somebody knocked at his door. He got, he went and answered his door and went to the other room with him. And all of a sudden, one of the guys came back in and had a gun in my face and told me to take my watch off. I thought it was a joke, but it wasn't. I asked him, I said, Where, where's Dion at? He, next thing I heard some noise by, in the behind us. And I said, oh, this is serious. So I tried to get up and run, and he shot me in the back first. You know, but I don't want to talk about that. But I got shot seven times, and Dion got killed. Okay. Um, um, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Um, what can you tell any of our young viewers how to prevent from anything like this happening to them or anybody they know? Well, what I would say is know the people that you are around. Know what they into. Don't just take just because you knew somebody for a long time that you know what they into. I think that before you go in someone's house, you should ask them, hey, I'm not trying to be funny, but are you into anything I should know about? Mm -hmm. Or and by these being young people, hey, are your parents into anything that I should know about? You know, but I think that they should say that part in a plain way so they can get the truth out of the kid. Because they'll say, oh, no, come on in. And then something could happen to your child. Mm -hmm. Being over somebody's house, when they, they don't have no business being over there. That's right. And I think that when it comes to our children, we should monitor our own children more. You know, yeah. let's not just drop them off over somebody else's house and say, hey, I'll be back. Because you don't know what your child is doing while they're with those people. That's right. Or you might not even know what those people have your child doing. That's right. 
So that's that's part of um that's part of what we share with the children with the streets don't love you back as well. Okay. You know, we, we try to we try to steer children into in a in oh, let me add by, by being here in Arizona I've learned that it's better to leave those children outside your door than to let them come in. Mm. This this came here because our house has been vandalized here mm -hmm. because my stepdaughter allowed some of her friends to come in from school and they backtracked when they knew no one was home and they stole all our stuff out of here. Wow. You know, but we'll carry on. Yeah. Right. So that's part of Teenage life. Don't let yeah. people in your house. It's better to just Hey, stop them at the door unless you know what the kid is into. Right. I gotcha. I gotcha. Do you have anything else going on with the streets don't love you back? I know you was telling me you guys are well, been we, going to schools and moving we, around. We have um, been to, well, you know, I've really, uh, I've been, only been here for three years. And I've, I've spoken several times now with, with the streets don't love you back but i wanted to get more active recently i've been trying to get more involved because um i had told rob but this was before i moved down here i always asked him to let me be a part of it i thought that i can make a difference at home i was going to the high schools there speaking um i was speaking to not the kids but teenagers you know about the fox don't love you back I mean, you know, the streets don't love you back. The fox is not worth the trade to chase. Um, maybe, maybe you guys should do this instead of selling drugs. You know, there's nothing wrong with going to be it's the the, the nerd of your class. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times, you know, kids laugh about the nerd in the class, but me being fifty something years old now, and I see the nerd in the class in the corporate building, mm -hmm. and the guy that was the the most popular guy in the class, he's drug addict in the street right. so I mean you it's, it's I mean we all <laughs> I mean so there's nothing wrong with being a nerd right. it's, just, it's what I try to tell kids you know and if you get picked on tell somebody talk to somebody don't don't just take the don't take the bullying let somebody know you're being bullied that way somebody else can go to that person and ask them to stop you know uh, is there anything you're working on coming up you want to tell the viewers? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm working on a, um, I'm working on my book as well as a movie. Okay. We're working on a movie script right now, but I want to take I want to take this time to say that I don't want to like a um, just like a hour and a half show. I want it to be like in, in, in like I don't just want it to be a movie. I, I would like to have stage plays. Oh, okay. You know, that's I would love to have stage plays, and that's that's I'm at I'm in the process right now of making scripts, okay. uh, short skits, or even um, we can involve the kids and let them play some of the roles of in the short skits. It's just not going to be on drugs. It's going to be on educational things for the children. Absolutely. You know, that's awesome. You know, but the book will be about me. Okay. But the short skits, I think that the kids enjoy that better than us always coming to preach. Got it. You know, we we have to spice it up for them because it just like when I came in, when I first met you, I said at the event, I said, well, I don't want to just keep repeating my story because you see in the audience that you have a lot of the same people mm -hmm. there. So they've heard your story. Right. What now? Got it. You want to spice it so up. So I want to spice it up and I want to do... I can, we can come out and, and, mm -hmm. and have like um, like um, poetry, mm -hmm. you know. We are, we are we lacking poets these days? Yes. You know, have you ever seen the kids come out and have um, poems that they can speak? I mean, this is what I want to. This is They're what like I'm. They're art and music now in school. So. This is why I'm proposing to the streets don't know you back that we expand it into other areas and genres because. They into this world, the computer world now. Mm -hmm. But I think that if we have something like spoken lyrics or something that they might enjoy that. Absolutely. But in there, for them, right? Not for the older folks. 
Got so it's, it. it's for the kids. More on their terms. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I got you know, we have to tone it down for them, but got they're it. still going to be with knowledge. Got it. You know. Well, you got any shout outs for us? You want to give any shout outs? Yeah, to I want to say good. <laughs> shout out to the streets on Love You Back. All right. Anyone Robin else? Ascendant. Uh, right. Get down, group. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, no. No. Uh 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 uh. You gotta say your lovely wife. Come on, keep on. Cause you oh, ain't about oh, to have. Oh, I apologize. I, I like to say, um, no, I want to say thank you to my lovely wife for putting up with me. Yes, there you go. And, um, okay. See, I, I, I like to say, um, <laughs> thank you to my children, mm -hmm. my grandchildren, my dad. Who should be out here to stay with us soon? And you're the third, so he's yeah, the yeah, second, he's, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. My, when I say my children, I also have a fourth. Or, or oh, a fourth. okay. Yeah. He's he's 24. He's uh he just got his degree. All right. Uh, awesome. Yeah, so um, it, it's from Oakland, um, and um, yeah, my my entire family. Shout out to the entire family. I love y'all. Wow. And, uh, I appreciate anybody else. You want anybody else? Am I missing anybody? No. No way. The entire family. That's that's good enough. Well, I thank you for having us at Getty Down Radio. You. Rock. This is only going to be the. Oh, I apologize. No, go this, ahead. This is only going to be the first of many. I would like to work with you guys as well. Oh, you will. And we keep trying to. I want to work with the children. I want to bring the children up. Instead of us always trying to, like I said, it's I easier to build up strong young men and women than to repair broken men. You know? right. So it's not that you can't be repaired. We, we'll work with you guys, but our focus is the children. Right. You know, it starts and, with them. And assisting the brothers that's incarcerated, you know, that, mm -hmm. that don't, don't have anybody. Shout out to you brothers as well, because mm -hmm. I know what you're feeling. I've been there. I want to say, hold on, brothers. To, um, stay prayed up, and you and, and your wish will come true. I never thought I was coming home. I always say this because I was doing. I did a lot of stuff before coming to prison, and I knew why I got. To, I don't. I never looked at it as the drugs that got me there. Mm -hmm. I knew it was the, all the other stuff that I was out there doing that didn't make sense. You know, I wasn't. I wasn't a villain. But you saying karma. Karma is up and mm. will come bite you in the butt. Every time. You right. you can't escape it. Every single time. And again, I wanna say that there's always well not always, but there are more ways than just being a, a drug addict. You know, I think that addiction is more than just being drugs. Mm -hmm. Abuse is more than just drugs. Mm -hmm. You know. You know, it's all types of abuse, and I think that we should touch on that with the children as well. I agree. You know, so in closing, thanks for having me. Thank you for you having know, us. You get down. Out. Get down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We out. <laughs>